don't understand. Yeah, it actually was some of the most sane sea I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Why can't I make it any... Oh, crap. I hate when this happens. You have to, like... There we go. Uh, all right. Let's... Okay, so this was great. Oh, yeah, I guess we don't have to do that, huh? We can just go here. I was going to go by GitHub, but I realized we have CPP next. You ready for some CPP? Oh, yeah, you better start the marker, though. I am going to start the marker right here. Kay. Okay. Start. CPP. All right, so let's look at CPP, everyone's favorite language of all time, <laughs> commonly referred to as Rust minus minus. Now, this one the also has a The big question is, like, how many C++ features did they use, right? Because, so we just looked at the C one. You can check the other video on this channel, link in the description, probably. Probably. Um, oh, I'm going to probably set it, maybe release them as a group. I'm not even sure how I'm going to do it, but that's a good oh, I call. don't know. Um... But if they used a bunch of C++ features, then you're going to be like, oh, wow, now I see why the Linux kernel is still in C. You're like, I yeah. see why Linus, like, hates this. <laughs> well, they are on C. They did, they did C23. Look at that. Yeah. So, so they, I mean, we're, we're this is pretty cutting we're, edge right here. Yeah. I'm not even sure if I could actually get from the apt suppository the correct version of LLVM to compile this <laughs> That's at this probably point. True. You have apt, to build everything from source. Yeah, because apt is really, really out of date. <laughs> I can't like I don't think I can get 13. You actually have to go find there's only one Docker image in the world that this works for, and you have to compile it on that machine. <laughs> the classic <laughs> does <laughs> You may be able to run one. a Docker image on any machine, but you can't compile a Docker image on any machine. <laughs> <laughs> the irony of docker <laughs> all right Whew. all right anyways uh let's let's go okay so we got a little cc and a little hh so let's look H -H. at that yeah that that's means that's super header okay so this is pretty nice so let's let's look at this one. Ooh, he does private first and then public i have never seen that before i've always that's done new. public first and then private honestly i've never What's done it with the little underscores at the end like they're already private they're already private, so this is a you know a pretty a pretty common feature. I, I would say I've seen a lot of. I, what I'm what I'm a little bit actually perplexed by is I I'm not seeing this like that. I feel like is the more common <laughs> common naming thing. This is all over Netflix. Or, even or the new M code we write. underscore capital I. <laughs> like I don't still know about do a capital. <laughs> that would be the most <laughs> offensive. Uh, but I see this a lot. <laughs> Still with the trail. It's private well. end module level. <laughs> <laughs> private first like equals it. back practice. I don't know if it's bad practice. It's just it's unusual it's to me. It's fine. Yeah, I, we're, to, we're just having fun, Chad. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm one of those people where I, I truly don't care in the sense that it's not something that's hugely meaningful to me. Yeah, especially if you're consistent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is kind of cool. Look at that little variant. Standard variant. I don't know what a variant is, but I assume it's it's like a little union. It's kind of like a pre-done for you union. It's either a string or a char. I don't know what a variant is. Wow. I can't read that code. <laughs> <laughs> go back. Go back. I'm not back. Tom. I'm Do not it. a genius. I'm not a genius. Do it's it. a Maybe Tom will comment on the video and tell us what it means. All right. Hey, Tom, what does this mean? <laughs> Tom, I... Is this Rust? Like, I don't even know what to look at right here. Uh, it's like when Trash Dev does his TypeScript challenges. <laughs> it is. It's a TypeScript challenge. Um, anyway, so this makes sense. You got, okay, so it's a type safe union. So effectively, it's it's just slightly, That's pretty cool, though. slightly nicer union. Okay. <clears throat> yep. well, he actually has two spaces between everything. Okay. Uh, we got a token type, enum class. Okay, enum yep. classes are pretty cool uh, because they're not just integers. You can't just simply, like... Mm. say one you is like now make one it, it's now yeah it, it, you have yep. to have it more defined which i think is pretty can cool. can you define like is it like an actual class can you put methods on it and stuff i don't think you can put methods on it i can't remember i okay. haven't used it yeah that's fine. beyond that i've used it once and i remember it's also a pain in the ass because i was bound <laughs> to i think c plus plus 11 when i what i was using it and it, it sucks uh, there's a lot I of problems with C++ I cannot get over how many conflicting answers we're getting from chat every time I ask <laughs> you a cannot, C++ you can. plus yes, question. No. <laughs> it is C++. There is no right answer. It depends on the version you're using. Because even in like C++ plus plus 11, there's like the, all these problems with maps and storing certain objects in the maps. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. like, can you create your own hash for a map? Yes and no, depending on which right. version of C++ 11 you're in. Like, it's just a nightmare to work with.
Right. And you're like, well, we also have like our own custom macro system where we just like template out. So like for us in our compiler version with these few extra additional make flags, like yeah. you can do it. So, yeah, we actually have that as well. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. Well, this looks good. Okay. I like this. I, I know. I know what we're going to go with. I, I feel like I know what's going to happen here. Ooh. Uh, all right. So let's see. We got Alexer input. Okay. This is all good. Uh, I like this little move you did right there. That's very beautiful. Uh, if it's mm -hmm. empty, uh, throw a nice exception. Hate throws, but okay, I get it. Uh, I will say just stylistically, the void on a new line, that kind of throws me off a little bit. Same. I'm not used to that. I'm used to this. But, I, you know, it, it's, just, it's just interesting. No exception. Is that what that means? It lets you grep for it really easy, though, right? Like, that's the thing is then you can grep carrot lexer colon colon read char and you'll find like that you'll find only the definition because it's like the only spot in the code base where it'll be at the first line i think that's like the style right oh is it a search usefulness yeah it makes it really easy to grab for right because you like literally search for carrot and then the type yeah, yeah, colon yeah, colon yeah. name and you'll only find this one so you can find the definition easy i don't know that would be my thought hmm that just feels like you don't have an LSP. Yes. Like that, fi that feels like a solution. Which is true for some of these. Okay. <laughs> it's just true. Like, okay. You've got, uh, you've got a billion lines of C++. Like unironically, true. there I are can't people... even start one. I just tried, you know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> maybe, maybe you think like we could go on VS Code and see if they have a really good experience with oh. C++. Never mind, look at <laughs> on that. the stream. Look at that. I, I got it working. It's working with the yeah. C++. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. All right, so let's see. Read position. Yep. Uh, new line file. If byte, do this. Update it. Uh, position. Wow. That. Look at this. Likely. Does that make the compiler choose that one as the one that it's going to do optimistically? Maybe. That's pretty dope. I don't know what that even means. Can someone explain that? What is likely? Well, I'm, right. It's going to be. It's going to be like. Confused. I assume that it's it's a compiler optimization. But how does that even ever work? Well, the C the CPU like is going to go ahead and pick one to keep doing and oh, then if it's, it's not branch. right then it's going to go back right but it's saying this one's the good one it's a branch yeah. prediction dang that's pretty cool i really don't know how that one works but okay i i'll just i'll believe it but i don't know how it works yeah yeah um all right next token this looks pretty good okay let's see we got this one uh yep looks exactly ooh, the same basically interesting. okay so you're gonna pass in so you're gonna do a pass oh. in mutation so you're going to pass in the token that you're going to pass in a token. It's going to okay. effectively create it. Uh, oh, but this one doesn't have a read ident. Hey, where's ident, sir? Maybe it's not in here. Then we read char. Huh, interesting. Okay, here, let's let's see how this one's used because I'm, I'm a little confused by this one. I think they just didn't get around to doing ident. Oh, they haven't done ident yet. You're right. They haven't done ident or, okay. Yeah. There's cool. no ident. Well, okay. But we get the picture. I think it looks pretty good overall. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I, I like it. Uh, I, I think I don't do enough C++ to know some of these like little style tricks. Yeah. I also, I find this, this is kind of interesting in the sense that you're putting the allocation on somebody else and not in the function, which I think does make, yeah. in some sense, it makes it easier because if you don't know, you know, I always have this struggle with C++, which is if I didn't allocate it, do I have to clean it up? Whereas this makes right. it at least more clear that you allocate it, you clean it up. Don't ask me. Yeah. I mean, I get to choose where I allocate it. Is this a stack allocation? Is this a heap allocation? Right? There's yeah. a little bit a little bit more control here. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, I'm not as I'm not a huge fan of mutability, you know, but like it's it's okay. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. That's I, the downside is that mutating arguments always feels weird. Yes. But I guess I did grow up in the C world and the Java world 1.5. And that was a fairly normal practice is that you'd pass things around and call stuff on them and they mutate. So maybe I have a right. little less of a hindrance. Well, when it. we get to OCaml, I didn't, I have no mutation. It's all no immutable. side effects. Uh, well, I mean, you just, you never do anything. Is, is it a white paper? Like, what are you going to be handing me here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It actually just calls out the Haskell and then uh, doesn't do anything at all. So, it's for a book, so you're allowed to write it in Haskell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Got him. Um, <laughs> all right. That was pretty funny. Uh, okay. Hey, 
Good job, Next. C++. Good Looks job. Good. Oh, we got to do a little rating. What do we, what do we, what do we give it? Oh, um... I'm interested to see what it would look like in the next phases because like for, so for the C one, it, it's really clear how you manage the memory and do everything right now because you're just doing like the one the one thing you're just like, oh, I've got a char and then I'm going to need to get rid of this char later. Like, OK, cool. That's easy peasy. But like it gets a lot more complicated once you have to start doing something like, oh, now I'm going to start evaluating things and like, what do I do with the memory of those results and stuff? Yeah. Um, and C++ at least has, I think, some tools that can sometimes make that like if you're writing modern C++ and everyone agrees, can make that simpler. <laughs> yeah, like if you're using a, a unique pointer or a shared pointer to manage memory, which is right. what we do pretty much exclusively now in Netflix, just because it is just a thousand times easier, yeah. um, at least in some parts of the application. There's some parts that still are very wild. 10-year-old uh, right. C++. Uh, there's, yep. there, there's cutting-edge C++ 11 still in the Netflix application. Nice. Yeah, yeah it's an old app. Uh, anyways, hey, mm -hmm. thanks for the thousand biddies. I appreciate that. Someone did say... Uh, Someone did. Someone did give it a C plus plus eleven out of ten. <laughs> really appreciate really that one. That's a really good one. And then someone That's also gave it a seg fault out of ten, which is a pretty the good. Likely out of ten is cool. The likely was pretty cool. Likely, yeah. Likely is pretty wild. I don't even know how to like reason about that. I don't even know where to define well, it. Well, right, you know, like uh, I don't. Well, why can't I remember what the name of what the CPU does when it's going to pick the next things? That, I mean, I know that branch it's branch prediction, prediction yeah. but, but it's like it, it when it puts them in a line. I can't remember the name. I don't know. I can't remember the name. What are you asking what? for? Never mind. I have no idea. Chat will know. No accept but. exceptions. It's pretty cool. I like that. I did like that he put like uh, the the no accept in there. Pipelining. Pipelining. There you go. Yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna like guess ahead, right? Which ones it's gonna do, and then if it gets wrong, if it gets a branch hit, then it'll keep going, right? So you're like telling the CPU, I want you to keep doing this one, which is cool. Okay. Yeah. I still don't understand how it works, but that's fine. Because it just seems yep. like so confusing to me, right? I'm, I'm just yeah, like well, in my like head. It's like trying from... to tell the CPU what, what branch it should pick before it gets there. Like, because that's what CPUs do. Yeah. And it also seems like, uh... let's see, what was the code? Just so I uh, likely. Yeah, this is the likely one. Huh. Right. I like, um, I, I feel like I now have a new meme where I'm going to just use bracket bracket likely. <laughs> For... <laughs> I like that one. All right. All right. All right.